welcome to Clamp, the weekly podcast where we discuss all things related to creating, living, and making projects. I'm the host, Grant Alexander, and joining me as always is Adam Mackey. Unfortunately, Jesse is unable to join us this week, so tonight we have a special guest. You could find this maker at your local animal rescue or controlling lights on a motion pictures in New York. He spends his downtime inside of something he calls Mr. Toad. And despite how it's spelt, his name rhymes with peace. It's Jeremy Spies. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. That was, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to get the full treatment, so I really appreciate that. Well, of course, That's everyone nice. gets the full treatment these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, last minute, I know you work on these things for weeks, so and then if you don't have time to, uh, yeah. you, you probably just have it just in case. Like, yeah, I, for all my friends. One of these days, I'll be ready. Exactly. <laughs> So why don't you take a second to uh, tell everyone uh, who you are and what you do? Well, you said I was already. I wasn't ready for that. Um, geez. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I work in film. Um, that's kind of my my career, but it's not really like the, the thing I'm passionate about. you know. So like you said, animal rescue is one of the things that I'm very passionate about. And then just woodworking, making stuff and working on my shop. And people always ask me like, what do I make? And I'm like, I don't know stuff for my shop. I buy tools, you know? So I, you know, I, I don't, I haven't really ever built like a big piece of furniture. I mean, I've built some things, but you know, yeah. Like when people try to be like, what do you make? I'm like, ah, I don't know stuff, stuff for the house. Like the camper I have made a lot of like cabinetry for, you know, done a lot of work on our house this house the other house we had before so um that's yeah that's basically it um so you've been making a lot of mallets recently and yeah. that's an interesting thing but i think that's enough what i you know i i think when it comes down to it I, a lot of people ask me that same question what do i make and i say i make stuff i make whatever i want to make and that's probably what you do you make whatever you want to make you've never wanted to make a big piece of furniture so you haven't made one i get it I'm with you. <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, I do want to, but, it, and that's, a, that's one of those things where like, I, I have things in my head, but they seem so far off of like such a big project. And I'm like, Oh, I have to finish all the crap I have to do for my house before I start. Like, let me make this heirloom piece of furniture <laughs> now, because it's going to take years, you know, of like dedicated work. So, but, um, Right. I, now, I did. Ha oh, go ahead. In thinking about that, do you ever feel like at the end of the day, you might have wasted your day? Nope. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I'm trying to transition <laughs> into the topic here, Jerry. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for wrecking that. Uh, so, tonight we wanted to talk about those times when you feel like. You might have got to the end of the day and maybe you felt like, did you waste that day? Did you waste that moment that you had? Um, and then maybe some strategies you can uh, employ to get over your – get out of your own way and actually, you know, utilize that time. Um, and I thought I'd throw it to our guest to start off because uh, he ruined my transition, <laughs> my segue. Yeah, so I mean – I, I to me, that's a very big thing. Procrastinating, you know, like uh, getting a late start. Uh, well, now I, if I'm going to do painting, the weather's not right. It's going to be right. take time to dry. What if it's going to make the house smell? I should wait till the weekend. You know, oh, it's going to be dinner time soon. Dogs, you know, so it's it's very easy to chip away at those hours or minutes you have and all of a sudden it's lunchtime and I, uh, you know, and yeah. So I, I definitely fall victim to that all the time and I have a hard time fighting it or realizing it when it's happening until it's mm -hmm. three o'clock. And I'm like, well, I had the day off. This was going to be great. You know? And I'm like, well, my wife's going to be home in an hour or two. So uh, should I start this now? And then I'm going to get all dirty. So yeah, it, it's a struggle. Yeah, I everything you've said, and then I combine in there like kids. Yeah, uh, and I go <laughs> uh, bed bedtimes in the, in thirty minutes or bedtimes in an hour. So should I go out in the shop? 
and or not like uh it is probably the thing that stops me from making the most is this there's like two things there's the like upcoming something that's going to happen so i can't function you know and i you know a lot of people with adhd have this problem of like if they have an appointment at 11 o'clock they can't do anything at all until 11 for fear of missing that appointment so i do that and then because i've definitely missed the appointments i've i've gone through an exam at school where i missed it completely because i got into something um and then missed my exam like that's a you shouldn't that shouldn't happen but it did um so I get that. And then there's the other part is this like needing the perfect thing, like this perfection procrastination, something I saw in uh, Dave Bauer's stories the other day is yeah. just like this definition of a perfectionist procrastinator. And I think that really hit home for me is, is that I have this, this these two sides pushing at me all the time. And I wonder how I make anything at all. And I think those are the strategies I might actually employ to make things is, is getting around those. And, you know, and I was wondering, what do you think, Adam? I 100% agree with everything. Okay. I good. procrastinate too much. <laughs> I saw, I saw a reel the other day, which I found very interesting. And it was the five second rule. Not you drop something, you have five seconds to eat it. Yeah. But more of, you have five seconds when you make a decision to do something to start doing it. Otherwise mm. you won't do it. And pretty much, you know, it's like sitting on the lounge and you're like, oh, I should probably go for a walk. If you don't get up within five seconds, you're not getting up. But if you get up like straight away, you're going to go, you're going to get for a walk. You're going to, and I thought that was really cool. A friend of mine uh, at work, like listened to this a couple of years ago. And there was like someone who went just count down from five at one, go and do the thing. Right. And that's great unless you have executive dysfunction and you can't make yourself do it. You So I need external pressure to make myself do anything at all, right? Like I, I can be like sitting, just enjoying my coffee in the morning or whatever, and watching videos and thinking I should go have a shower, right? And I can just be sitting there doing that. And it's like a Saturday and I don't have anything like – sure i want to go get up and do something with the day and i'll finish my coffee and like an hour later my wife's like i'm gonna go shower and i'm like i was just about to do that right <laughs> and i'm like and i what i was an hour ago i had first had yeah. that thought and i can't make myself do it yeah i have that like so i have a peloton bike and it's been great to keep me you know fit exercise, whatever, lose weight a little bit. And I have a thing where you can do, you know, they, you get a blue check or it's not a blue check, but it's a blue circle <laughs> every day, you know, and it, you got on these like long streaks where you don't want to break it. But I mean, yeah. like, it's like, it'll be, you know, after dinner, it'll be sitting on the couch and it's like nine o'clock. I'm like, all right, I should do it right now. And then it's like 1145 and I'm like, just a second, and then I can, I can just do this. And I'm, I mean, I'm like, it is not rare that it's like eleven fifty eight, and I'm like, okay, start. You know, like start. Like, okay, <laughs> it counts if it's before midnight. I, I had the same thing with Duolingo, and I had like a big, giant, long streak, uh, and then I one day missed it, and I had the the streak freeze on. And okay, I was like, okay, so I still got it. I went back, did it one more day, missed it again. And I've and I deleted the app afterwards, like after a week later, because I went, I'm never going to get that streak going again. And my wife, on the other hand, had this. We had the same like really long, like 200 day streak. She missed a couple weeks, and now she's back up to like 200 days again. Like, yeah, of course you could you could make it up. It's it's you know, it you just got to keep going at it. But I I had this like I remember days where I would like be frantically doing it right before midnight. Uh, and unlike uh, the Peloton, you have to finish it before midnight or else it doesn't count. Uh, right. I found that out by accident. I was like, oh, it counted. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking I have to do one that's like five minutes long at like 1254, you know, and I'm like, hey, wait, it still worked. I nice. can do one that's at a real, ex- like an actual workout <laughs> starting at 1155. 
Yeah, I don't think that's the right time to work out, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's better, better than, than ever. Hey, whenever, whenever you got time, yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah. My my um so my personal trainer, I do online coaching through her as well. And the same thing. So like every day I get a, a workout plan that I have to do and I get that little tick and then I get my streaks of how many days I've done in a row and And that'll come back to stuff working in the shop. If I know my wife's coming home and I said I'm gonna be doing this or that and I'm like, Oh man, I barely even started like I got nothing to show. Like I've been home all day. Like what the hell am I doing? I'm like, I'm like, all right, I got an hour and a half. Like, what can I get done that looks like something? <laughs> external, yeah, external motivation, like you said. I, I feel like I'm a bit more. Um, so Grant could definitely relate to this. I know that, but I'm have a bit more of like self-diagnosed ADHD. Whereas, like, I get so easily distracted. Yesterday, I was meant to. Re- I was meant to edit the reels for Grant to put up. I edited one, put it on the drive, and then didn't do the rest because I got distracted. But my plan for yesterday was to wash the inside and the outside of my wife's car and move the caravan out of the driveway because we've had the caravan sitting in the driveway and we just wanted to get it out of the way. So I moved the caravan and then there's all leaves on the driveway underneath it. So next thing you know, I'm out there sweeping up all the leaves and then I'm leaf blowing and then I'm, and it just, it just snowboard and snowboard and snowboard. And next thing I know, it's like three hours later and I'm only just finishing washing the car, which took me like 10 minutes to wash the outside. But the inside, I like, I got it in there and I'm like, oh, it just needs a vacuum. Next thing I know, I've got hot soapy water and scrubbing every single surface. And I, I get myself into those things as well. And I, I don't know, like, it's like an unproductive sink. It's it's being productive, but it's like a avoidance. It's being productive in the wrong way. So you're 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 spending your productivity in quicksand, right? <laughs> like in places you didn't need to do it, and you're yeah, you're you're getting stuff done, but you never needed to do it. Like it's like all of a sudden, oh, gotta get the Christmas lights down, and it's like, no, I didn't, I didn't need to do that today. That was not uh, something that needed to happen, or. You know, uh, the other day, I, half my keyboard uh, is extremely clean because I started popping the keys out and cleaning mm. the keys one by one. And then I realized I was, that's ridiculous that nobody needs a keyboard that clean, right? Like, yeah, it doesn't need to be factory clean ever again, it, except for half of them are now. <laughs> uh, and, but I realized it halfway through and I went, okay, I got to stop this because this is not – it's productive, but not productive. Yeah. Right? I'll be like, all right, I got to paint this whole thing. All right. Well, let me try sharpening chisels this way. I'm like, wait, what am I doing? I don't need, I'm not about to chisel. I need to paint it. I'm avoiding it because I hate painting because I'm going to ruin the paint job and I got to. Right. And then you, sometimes I get those like avoiding tactics and you're avoiding and avoiding and avoiding. And then you find out that the thing you were avoiding took five minutes. Right? Yep. I know like Bob on making it has talked about it a lot, like something that you knob or something. Off. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, if I had just taken that screwdriver out. But I for me, I know if I go down that rabbit hole, it's like three hours of like, oh, if I if I tighten one knob on a thing, I have to tighten every knob. Because another knob's gonna be loose and I'll like kick myself for not tightening it while I was tightening knobs, right? Yeah, those, those little projects we had, we bought, this wasn't a little project, but it was something that still, we bought new doors for like the entire interior of the house. Mm-hmm. And we spent, you know, like whatever it was, $1,200 on doors, you know, and they were just sitting in our guest room. It's <laughs> like, we got to get around to them. Oh, it's such a big deal though. How are we going to paint them? Uh, you know, so I think we did them all in like a weekend, yeah. you know, but it was like, just just this pile of doors the whole time just staring at me like this failure in the corner like just like looming you didn't do this yet it's a big mess there's a pile you're gonna have to get hinges what if you don't what if the trim doesn't match up what if you gotta get a strike plate that's different uh you know you you build all these things up and you know it was work but it wasn't it wasn't insurmountable and we got it done without too many struggles and it it worked fine it's it's amazing what what you can get done when you do the thing you put out to get done. And that's where I feel like, you know, is it a waste of your day? So a lot of us are in this for a hobby, right? Yeah. And so if you're doing something for your hobby and 
you go out there with the intention of making something and you make something different, but you enjoyed it, or you sharpened your chisels and that's the thing you did and you enjoyed that time while you were doing it, is it a waste of a day? And I want to say 90% of the time, it's not a waste. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, like I've been working on these mallets and they're not like something I sold to somebody that I have to get them done. Like I want to get them done and uh, people are expecting them, but you know, it, it's not like something that somebody gave me money and, um, and you know, I, they expect it in a week. So like when I do get distracted and, Oh, you know what? I need to make a table saw jig and I spend the time doing that instead. Or I'm like, Oh, you know, maybe try this or that instead of that. And you know, they get pushed back a day, you know, no one's crying about it because you know, they're, they're getting it for free. So they're not like, right. <laughs> this is, there's no pressure on that. So, it, you know, it, it's fun to work on that. But if I get distracted from that, it's fun to work on that other thing too. And it's not detrimental because I'm not in a business that's going to go out of business if I don't, do what I'm supposed to do. So then, you know, thinking about oftentimes uh, thinking about wasting my day, uh, I often bring it back to when it is my work. And I do, I've had days that have, you know, been in the office or whatever and felt like I did nothing. Um, and I think about that and I go, unlike in the shop where I was being, slightly productive in the wrong areas, I find it's a lot easier at your office to be completely unproductive because you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have access to these, these, these unproductive tasks that you can do. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like you're not going to do something else, but <clears throat> that's for you, but I will do something right. at work that is for something else for work that yeah. maybe I didn't need to do then. And the person is waiting for the thing that I was supposed to do. And then, you know, like towards the end of the day is coming around. I'm like, they're probably going to expect that I should have done this. Like maybe I should, you know, like I spent all this time making the perfect labels for things that would have been fine with a piece of tape and a <laughs> Sharpie, you know, but now I have to, design this whole map for a set that I didn't do yet. And I got to like scramble to get that done because that's what I was really supposed to be doing. So now I'm doing what should have taken four hours in an hour. Cause I spent three hours making pretty labels for no reason. My theory on this is that your brain actually knows how long it would take. <laughs> and it knows it will only take an hour to do that. And it says, if you take four, it won't be any better than the one hour that you're going to actually give to it. So it makes you do the unproductive task for the th first three hours. And then you go through that one hour to show how quickly you could do it or how long it actually took or should have taken. The only thing that matters is that your boss doesn't know you did it in an hour. <laughs> then they'll expect you to do it in an hour next time. And you never do it in the first hour. You know, and right. then and then screw off for the last three because you got to be able to say, it, "Well, I still have to finish all this." Give isn't it, that oh, funny how our brain works? It's not, "Oh, let me quickly get it done," and then I've got all this free time after. It's always just put yourself under a crunch. Yeah, because under a crunch, you you can't overanalyze your choices. Yeah, that's where I think a lot of uh, this this problem with wasting your day is is that you have too many choices and you can't figure out which one to do. Have you ever walked out into your shop and gone, I don't even know what to do? But you know, you have lists and lists everywhere. There's lists everywhere on things that you need to get done, things that you want to get done, things that are even small things that you're just like, if I just went out there and did this thing, I'd get it done. And and you go out to the shop and you just like, I, I went out there today and I was just like, I don't know what to do. So I started cleaning up, right? And I get that's a lot of times what people will do. But uh, it's like this weird thing where I, I'm like, I have tons of small projects, like an hour long project. I only have an hour. Okay, I could do this. But for some reason, when I go out there, I can't do it in that hour. And I think it's because I have too many choices. Yeah, I've, I've done even less. I'll just go out there and be like, walk around and like, 
Especially if it is messy and I don't feel like cleaning. Oh, like, yeah. oh man, this is quite a mess. Like, whew. <laughs> I I don't know what to I think so I think part of the uh ways that you can deal with this like feeling like you've wasted the time is to narrow down your possibilities. Recognize the time you have and narrow down the possibilities because you're probably not going to start that fire furniture build when you only have an hour. <laughs> Right? right. So get that out of your mind. Right. You know, start paring down the thing. Start. It's like being a little bit self aware. And I get that's really difficult because oftentimes we want to escape. And that's what we're doing to get out there. So we, we want to escape from ourselves. We don't want to be, you know, self aware. We want to have some fun. And, you know, but I think that's a good start on, on how to deal with the wasted time. It's definitely the getting started for me. Like once I get started, I'm going, I'm go, go, go. But I make so many excuses not to start, especially the, I've only got an hour, you know, yeah. it's, oh, well, by the time I get out there and then this, and then, oh, just not enough time. Oh, I may as well just not do it. Even like, if I want to play a video game or something, I'm like, by the time I set up my laptop, it's going to take 15 minutes. And then, you know, it's just like, yeah, so many excuses that I make for myself that I don't have enough time. But you said like, you're not going to go out and start a high end furniture. Why not? Why can't you go do half an hour worth of work on it? Get the wood out ready to go or, you know what I mean? Like, right. but we tell totally. ourselves we don't have enough time because we don't want to, I don't know. You definitely can be productive if you plan for it. And I think they were just talking about that on making it. It was like, you know, if you know, all right, I, this is what I have. I got a half hour. Yeah, I got to do these things. And then this is what I'm going to do. And I could definitely do that. I mean, I had whatever I was doing here not dreading it, but I'm like, Oh, I got to plan this out. How long is it going to take? And I did it in a half hour probably. And I filmed it, you know, so that took a little <laughs> longer, you know, so I was like, Oh man, I've been like, think you know, I've probably put 10 hours in thinking about it and a half hour to actually do it, you know, like, Oh, yeah. I got to cut it out. And then I got to make sure it's all lined up. That could be tricky, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I wonder if you didn't have those, you know, 10 hours, one hour, whatever, pre-planning, uh, unconscious thought, you know, that's, that's only your conscious thought that you're probably thinking. You're probably, your unconscious was thinking about it even more. Mm -hmm. Um, would it have gone as smoothly? No. And I, I definitely, I put, um, some weight to that, that, that conscious and daydream slash, you know, sleep dream, thinking about it, planning is like, you can work out some of those details, you know, some of those things you come up with don't necessarily pan out in reality, but you come up with some solutions about how things are going to fit together, which way you're going to do it. What are you going to use? How long it's going to take, or, you know, where are you going to do it? Maybe if it's, if, uh, yeah. all right, I'm going to be welding. Like I can't do it inside cause it's going to be too smelly. I can't do it outside cause it's going to be raining tomorrow or whatever. So like maybe I could do it Thursday and, you know, that, that maybe that's a dumb, dumb example of it, but like, you know, you just work out these things, I, like things like how is something going to join together? Would, you know, I'm not talking about fancy joinery, but like just uh, sometimes yeah. it is. Yeah. Sometimes that's the thing <clears throat> is like there's, there's a billion different ways to join wood or maybe not a billion. There's a thousand different ways to join wood. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you know, if I've said something once, I've said it a million times. I hate mm -hmm. exaggeration. Um, uh, you, you, you could, you know, butt join something, and that's a shitty way. So your mind is like, ah, it's not good. Pocket holes, nah. Dowels, nah. You know, forty fives, whatever you call those miters, nah. Yep. You know, like it's going through dovetails. Oh, maybe dovetails. Oh, I don't really know how to do that. Okay, nah. You know, oh, fucking box joints. Good to go, right? Right? Yeah. Oh, and now and now you're you're so you've analyzed down to that, and then uh, then you have to have the like I I just made this Lego box for my kid, and I use box joints, and I think I spent more time thinking about getting out there and setting it up than doing it. Yeah, but then I also spent uh, probably an hour like doing test pieces. 
to make sure that it would go smoothly so that it only took 15 minutes to go through all of the fucking cuts and right. everything went together perfect. As opposed to if I hadn't spent that hour doing a test, adjusting it, doing a test, adjusting it. Are you really a maker if you don't spend 10 hours thinking about it to do a half an hour thing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really though, like not even just, not even just the procrastination or thinking too much into it, but making sure that you have it how you want it before you start as well. That's what I find that I do is that I'm the same with, um, with tattoos, for instance. I think of what I want to get for a tattoo. And if I'm still thinking about, if I still want it in a year, then I'll get it. Right, right. But if I don't, like, so I've, I had a few ideas of tattoos I wanted to get. I've had a tattoo designed for my arm for the last six years that I really want to get, which is just coming down to go to Fiji to get it, uh, Bali to get it. But um, I've had that, and I still want the exact same tattoo. So I know that it's something that I want permanent. Whereas I've had others that I've forgotten about within six months and I'm not interested in that I would have probably regretted. Okay. To get back on the, the wasting <clears throat> our day is, uh, as I think there's a good, like Jimmy, uh, Jimmyism is, uh, you know, just do the next thing, do the yeah. next step, do whatever it is, the next thing, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I remember him talking about like getting a big, uh, you know, I think it was like a South bend that he yeah. went to go pick up our Bridgeport. Um, and it was like, well, how are you going to get this? And he's like, I don't know. Let's just get it to the next part. And then right. from there, we'll worry about it. We'll get and to the top of the G- steps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything in Jimmy's world seems to work out. All the doors are the right size and whatever. I have definitely had times where it's like, oh, okay. Well, we'll get it to this part. And then uh, we'll go back to the store and return it because it does not does not fit. It will not go through the door for some reason. Everything he does fits through all the doorways and comes out the basement's no problem. And But uh, I, I do think that the get it to the next step and figure out the next step is a really good way to, you know, utilize that time that you're not wasting. I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, back to that. I think we just have, you come up with these ideas and to just do, one step that's a great example is like I can get overwhelmed by the mountain that's ahead of you, but you just take that first step, the next step, the next step. You don't have to look all the way up to the top. You can just look 20 feet ahead of you. How do you get there? And that's the same thing. You know, it's just a more metaphorical version of it. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, but you can like, you just be like, Oh my God, like, look at all this. And, the same thing if your shop is there. You're like, you just walk in and you're like, Jesus, what do I do about this? All right, let me put away the clamps. Okay. Now those are out of the way. Let me get rid of the jigs that are over here. Okay. Now I got sandpaper. Let me put that away. There's three drills and 10 drill bits out. Let me put those away. Instead of like, oh my God, I'm drowning in this mess. You know, it really does. Just pick it to the smallest piece, do that piece, move on to the next one. And then you've achieved something. So you can check that off and you're like, all right, we're making progress here and it's clean or it's done or it's moved. Yeah. I really wish I could do that more often. Is I, I so in my house, I, I don't do the cooking or the dishwashing, which I know is like, uh, you're supposed to do one or, or the other. And I get that's how it's supposed so to it happen. Clean. It's not how it happens. Clean where right. I come from. Right. Yeah. Okay, Fast and the Furious. Um, <laughs> so the, the biggest problem is I get – I want to help out and I get in front of the dish pile and I fi- I cannot see where to start because at the end of the day, it's so – it gets to this point where it's like cr- crazy and I go, how did it even get here? How did this many dishes get into this spot? And I don't know. And it's not how I would have done it. And I worked as a dishwasher, <laughs> but it never got that bad when I worked as a dishwasher because it was like, no, I got to keep this moving. It's got to go, 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 right? The stuff does not pile up when I worked as a dishwasher because if it did, I would get overwhelmed. And I think that's what – it's the same thing. I, I get overwhelmed and I can't do it. I physically cannot make myself do it because of my like anxiety or whatever it is. Um 
I'll right. tell you how to start. Turn on the tap. One dish at a time. <laughs> so it's Turn you know, on the water. You know what's funny? You know you're a grown-up when you get excited that the dishwasher's already empty when you go to do the dishes. Mm. But oh, so, yeah. Which is funny because that goes into my next point. I wish that current Adam would stop leaving the mess in the shop for next time, Adam. Because yes. if I cleaned up at the end of the day, it would make getting back into the shop to start my day so much easier and motivating. And then I wouldn't waste the day thinking, oh, I'm not going to go in there because I have to clean first. Yeah, I've thought about that the last couple of nights or whenever I was, you know, finishing up <clears throat> and about that and, you know, about Jimmy talking about the batteries. There's no batteries left because I'm just, I know I'm going to use it tomorrow. I'll just leave it, whatever. So <laughs> um, I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm like turning off the lights. I'm like, wait a minute. I probably will use that, all that sandpaper and that chisel and that mallet and that, you know, tape or whatever. But maybe I won't. Let me just put it away. And it took right two two minutes, and it was like yep. spotless. And like then I come in tomorrow, and I'm like, yeah, I don't even have fake cleaning to do it. I really actually got to do something now. Go ahead. I I have really got in the habit lately of putting a tool back and not putting it down. So like if I use a screwdriver, yes. as soon as I'm done with it, I put it back in the holder. If I have to go back and then get it, at least if I don't go and get it, it's put away. The only time I won't do it is if I know that like I pull like a part off my bike with a socket and it's a pain in the ass to put it away, but I know I'm going to be using it like literally because I have to put that part back on. I, at the end of the day, everything should go back to its spot. And this is on the yeah. race team that I work on. It is like my number one complaint when I'm working there is like we can never find whatever tool we were just holding on to. And it's because... There, if there's a horizontal surface somewhere, that tool gets dropped there instead yep. of going back in the toolbox where it belongs. And now we don't have any of those. So we have like 15, 17 mil sockets because we keep losing them, losing them by putting them down mm -hmm. somewhere. I'm like, and then we got to try and put the wheels, you know, wheel studs on and they're, we don't have a fucking 17. And I go, we got to stop doing this. Because this is a waste of time. And when we waste our day spending 30 minutes looking for a, a socket yeah. or a tool or whatever it is because you didn't put it away is actually the waste of a day. Spending that time where you didn't go into the shop because you're thinking about it isn't as wasteful <laughs> as not putting something away and never being able to find it. Yeah. So your race team has no 70 mils and no 10 mils. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my yeah. default. My, so my wife is notorious for this. She'll go borrow like a tool out of the garage when I'm not home, and then she'll just sit it back on the bench. Never put shit away. It drives me insane. But I wanted to say that having an organized shop helps with it as well. So like mm -hmm. I've got my top um, drawer in my workbench now. is It's a little bit messy, but I know where everything is, and it's a bit organized. Like I've got – a little container that has all like my pencils and stuff in it, another container with Stanley knives, another container with scissors. And every time I finish with it, I just quickly open the drawer, put it away. It's not that hard to get it back out. Yeah. And I think a lot of people talk about how much it, of a waste of time or they don't have the time to organize. And I'm like, if you don't spend the time to organize now, you waste so much more time in the future. So much yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you yeah, find like I said, you, you're not motivated to, motivated to go out there, so you waste all that time. Yeah. Do you find now, you know, if you're home, you're working, it's your shop, it's your stuff. You you could be like, oh, I know I'm gonna use that later. I can leave it because I know where it is. When you're at the race team, you I don't know how many people it is, but you seem to feel like you have responsibility to make sure that the next guy is gonna be able to find it, but it seems like you have somebody else who maybe doesn't feel the same way or some people that don't feel the same yeah. way. Well, that's the, the people who own the tools because <laughs> it's generally, <laughs> he, he does most of the work uh, himself out in the shop by himself. Right. And then other people come around on race weekends or on yeah. the other nights that we, we do it. And I think that's exactly it. And so oftentimes what I do when I get in there is I take every tool that's out and put it away. Yeah. And he goes, I was going to use that. And I go, well, now you know where it is. Right? Because yeah. that's like, I'm like, yeah, you might have grabbed that wrench or that socket or whatever you were going to go grab. 
but now it's now right where it needs to go and we're yeah. never going to have a problem. And so like my unofficial title is like, you know, the tidy fairy or something. Cause I just mm. go around, like I'll grab stuff right when they're actually using it sometimes and put it away because I didn't realize they're using it. It was just laying out on the floor and nobody was around for a second while they went to, you know, grab a part or whatever, but, little side note but do you guys um speaking of like organizing have you guys got either of you had any experience with like kaizen foam just seen the stuff it looks cool because i really want to i really want to use it but then like it's really fucking expensive to me it's definitely a rabbit hole and i think unless you're going portable or something that's like real like we need to have these exact things because if we don't have the exact ones in this exact spot. To me, anything that I have is not that rigidly defined that like I need these 10 exact things, you know, maybe if it's like a, a camera kit or something like that, that, you know, and it's great because you know, Oh, that one's missing or, and yeah. of course for like sh- shipping it or, or putting it in a truck or the back of a car, or if you do like overlanding or something like that, you know, it's not banging all around, but yeah, I mean, I think people go a little nuts with it. Obviously. What I would do instead is uh, vacuum formed. Mm. Because one, oh, yeah. if you have a YouTube channel, you can often get a vacuum former for free. <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about that next week, Adam. Uh, but yeah, like I don't know, Chad's custom creations just did a bunch of uh, videos about his, of getting a vacuum former and trying it out. And I, th- I have some like tools that came in a vacuum formed uh, thing in the package. Yeah. And I took that package piece and put it in the toolbox. And now that's where the, my vice grips go. And well, I, that wrench set that I, that I did the reaction video to your wrench yeah. video, those blue point wrenches came in. I mean, that's a vacuum formed little tray. Obviously it's meant to keep them. I'm sure you yeah. know, it's not just meant to, cause it's not even like something that would be at a store really. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's perfect because you know that everyone goes there. It fits in the drawer and it doesn't, you know, they don't fall all over each other and you can see which one's missing, you know, yeah. so you know which one to look for. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean like that, it is perfect for stuff like that. And and that doesn't take as much room as like, if you had an individual slot for each separate item. Your know, my, like my socket set I have in like the actual case that it came in fits in one of the drawers. But the case itself, like the surrounding around the sockets and everything takes up so much space that I'd rather have it in like the case and foam. And and also it's weirdly organized because it's like the tall sockets and the spanners are in one half hmm. and then the shorter sockets and all like this, the actual um, ratchets are in the bottom half. But they're like, I would rather have them in like Imperial and metric. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even like, um, quarter inch and half inch drive side or eight yeah. quarter inch yeah quarter inch and eighth inch three but they're not they're like three all mixed eighths. and it's really annoying yeah whatever it is <clears throat> yeah yeah I hear you a hundred percent I agree that if you were to design it it would be different than the way that the factory designed it for everything to fit within uh, a package you know, a, a nice package they, it's often yeah. not right but I think that we've uh, we've wasted enough time talking about uh, spanners, and instead we should talk about something more exciting like patrons. Um, and I'd like to right now thank our patrons, especially the F clamp level: mm. Brent Jarvis from Clean Cut Woodworking, Vincent Ferrari from Digitally Creative. Scott from Dad It Yourself DIY, Joe Herdina, Lawrence from Maritime Knife Supply, Rich from Low End Design, and David Wood from DW Wood Builds. So I want to thank all of them, and especially all of the other little patrons. Uh, you know, whether you're a spring clamp or a C clamp patron, uh, like uh, Jeremy here. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can listen to the pre-show and after-show where we often talk about fun things and/or secret stuff. You also get a keychain, leather keychain made by yours truly. And you get, uh, I think that's it. That's that's all the, the, the things that you can get. But uh, you can get uh, all that at patreon.com slash clamp. Clampmendations. All right. Well, my clampmendation for this week is going to be a YouTube channel called Built Not Bought. 
uh, it's an Australian channel who mainly pretty much builds like four wheel drives and four wheel drive fun things in his house slash workshop. He's just built like a massive like dream workshop. But um, yeah, I don't know. He just builds like cars and stuff. It's really cool. Cool. Check built that my butt. I've heard of that. Yeah, it sounds mm. sounds familiar to me as well. But it probably is. I t- I took a look at the YouTube and I did not recognize a single video, and I just went, "This all looks clickbaity." So maybe I won't <laughs> check it out. Uh, it it uh, looks it, but it's not. Well, it looks like stuff I don't want to click on then. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I'll click on a couple. Uh, I want to recommend a Gnome Hammer Forge. I was out using my uh, hammer that I got from him, and I really enjoyed using it. And he is uh, just upgrading his tool set recently, and you should go check him out. He posts a lot of videos. I think he does lives on Instagram as well. Uh, I have only ever clicked on live by accident, so... I won't be watching that, but maybe if that's something you're into, you can go check it out. Uh, I always feel bad if you've ever clicked on a live because you went to go click on someone's story and they started a live just at the same time. Mm. That's how you can, if that's how it happens. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh crap. (laughs) And then you have to leave real quick before you, hopefully they don't notice, but uh, yeah. So, but uh Go check them out, and if you're if you need a hammer and you live in uh, either U.S. or Canada, probably not Australia, uh, you can get a get a hammer from him. So I wanted to recommend Mara from Silverhair and Sawdust. Oh yeah, um, and I am so sorry if I said your name wrong because she clarified it the other day, and I think that confused me. So now <laughs> I don't know how I said it. So I'm not even going to repeat it wrong. But she's just. Uh, She's doing some cool stuff. She just taught her first class the other day and she does like all these crazy, like she seems to do a ton of stuff. Um, And she actually had a good interview back in the day on um, the uh, Katie Freeman's podcast. Her name at the time was not silver hair and sawdust. It was um, taught them to fly. So if you go oh, in the back catalog, back okay. catalog, it's there. But I think they might have also republished it under her silver hair and sawdust name. So that that's like a nice listen about uh, kind of her history of stuff. Um, and she's also always very encouraging whenever I post something. And, you know, she does this really cool marketry and furniture builds. And she's putting out a lot of stuff and just like very skilled and uh, yeah. nice person. So. She was uh, she was one of the entries into the clamp challenge. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely recognize the name, and I've been following her. I think from before then, but uh, yeah, she's. Uh, I'm always amazed at two things: how how much she puts out, and how often she does like an introductory post to say, yeah. "Hey, I see a lot of new people here. It's been a while," and I'm like, "Has it?" And I look back and I go, <laughs> "Fuck, it has been a while. Time is flying." <laughs> I yes. apparently I need to do that more often. Yeah, Every, you know what I think I'll do? Every time she puts an introductory post out, that should be like a like a prompt for me to put one out cuz it's probably been a while. Yeah, she does a lot of like cats and dogs too, so it's, you know, ah uh, yeah, extra special for me. So uh, so at this point of the juncture, we would normally do an ask Jesse anything. So if you're interested in hearing Jesse's opinion on something or some history about Jesse or, or whatever you want to do, you can ask Jesse anything. But because Jesse's not here, we're doing Adam's Slang of the Week. Yeah. So I actually got sent some Slang of the Week from Jared Jenkins. Oh. Um, or Jerry Makes. And he's actually in South Australia. So he says some of it may be a bit regional. And I must say that uh, they definitely are because a couple I don't know. You don't know. But, well, we're in good shape then. Well, yes. So <laughs> we're going to do something a little bit different because he's sent me quite a lot. And I want to do the first four only because they're in a once you work out the first one, not in a sentence, but they're all related. Oh, okay. They're all so they're all variants of the same thing. So once hmm. you work out what the first one is, it'll it'll help. And then I'm gonna save the rest for when Jesse's on. 
So first one is Rat Coffin. Okay. Are you going to give us all four and then we'll guess? No, I'm going to give you the first one and then we're going to go on from there. Oh. Mm. Rat Coffin. Rat, can you use it in a sentence, please? Uh, like a bad car. No. Like going to shoot down car. to the servo and pick up a rat coffin and a can of Coke. Mm. Can you tell me what a servo is? I'm going to a convenience Service store station? is my guess. No, I know. Or, I, just, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Can you tell me what a can of Coke is? A rat coffin. Uh, I'm going to say it's a pack of cigarettes. It would be a cooler, I don't think, because you are, that doesn't make sense. Rat coffin. All right, I'll tell you what this one is. It's a sausage roll. Oh, obviously. Okay. okay. So the next one <laughs> is a maggot bag. <laughs> a, it's maggot a hot dog bag. or something? Maggot bag. Well, it's like a... So what kind of crap can I get at the servo that's in a bag? Well, think of a sausage roll, and then I said maggot bag. For, so sausage roll is a rat coffin. <laughs> maggot bag is a... Corn dog? No. I mean, I mean actually, th think think more Australian. People smother them in tomato sauce. Vegemite. That's got to be iconic. French fries? Meat pie. A meat pie. Oh, meat pie. Meat mm. pie. That's a we got maggot bag. Is a meat pie? Maggot bag is a meat pie. I've never those two. I've never heard of. Okay. Okay. Uh, um. All right. Last one. Coffin nails. Cigarettes. Yep. I call them cancer sticks, but. All right. Yeah. There were supposed to be four. Yeah, I skipped one because it's silly. Okay, we'll do it anyways. Because and we'll let Jeremy guess it. I've been guessing. <laughs> well, no, because I like stole the coffin nails because I knew the answer. Right, give me a sec. I'll edit this part out. Well, one time you guys did mine and there was a little bit of a debate about how it was. So you did my word of the week, which yes. was Gavon. And I Gavon. think you said it a little bit different, which I understand. And I sent the video to try to back it up. But the Gavon, this guy's a Gavon. And I think I, the example was, you know. Look at this guy on eating three slices before anybody else even had two. Right. And that was a long time ago. I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't right. remember the end. I don't one, remember what it was, but. Last like one is a, a snot block. I don't know if this is actually something that would be. I don't know if this is an Australian food or not. Snot block is a food? Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> well, so is rat coffin in a maggot bag. <laughs> Yes, apparently. Uh, milkshake. Uh, uh, Do you drink you it or eat it? Right? You eat it. You eat it. So I said food, not a drink. Well, me, 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 me. Is all I heard there. Uh, snot block. Uh, I'm gonna say like gummy bears, uh, like a like a apple pie thing. Kind of. So it's a vanilla Jelly slice. Donut. A vanilla you slice. You guys know what a vanilla slice is? No. So a vanilla slice is a pastry, which is like a bottom layer of puff pastry, and mm -hmm. then a thick, like a really thick yellow custard layer in between, sort of like jelly, but custard, and then puff pastry on top. Hmm. So it's like a yellow custard puff pastry sandwich. Interesting. Interesting well, thank indeed. you very much, Jared, for those fun uh, and just gross this convenience store foods. Uh, I want to thank TF Turning for the theme song. I want to thank uh, Jeremy uh, Speets for coming on here and uh, Speche. No, yeah, I'm sorry. exactly. I've, I wanted to say it wrong. Just yeah, everybody fun. likes to say that. Yeah. I, you know what the problem is? Is there's two C's together? Oh, I know what the problem is. <laughs> and everyone sees two C's and they go, "We well, have to pronounce both of them." Yeah. Because we're there. My grandmother used to say specie. Now, keep in mind, it's not her uh, maiden name, you know. Like, So it wasn't like her name that she grew up with. Okay. It was her married name. So she was open to interpretation too, but we don't know for sure. I mean, basically it was, you know, 
like one of these Ellis Island type yeah. bastardized names that somebody decided that's how you spell something and that's why it doesn't make any sense. Right. And even then, it might even have been like someone had poor uh, penmanship. And yeah. like this, the two C's, actually one of them is an E. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how my grandfather pronounced it. That's how my grandmother pronounced it. And then my dad decided maybe on his own that it was Spies. Or maybe that's how my grandfather said it. I don't know. But speaking of my dad, I have to issue a, a correction because on Dave Bauer's podcast, he was like, were you, you know, were your parents creative, handy? And I was like, no, nah, not really. And then my dad somehow stumbled on this podcast and he's like, oh, you know, my dad's not too handy. And I was like, I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> he's very handy. He's very creative. He makes cool stuff. I built this house by myself for my only two years. <laughs> I'm like, I had never thought you'd hear this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope he's listening. If you're listening to the clamp right now, Jeremy's dad, uh, send us a mention, send us a message or, or an email or something, and, and let us know that affects you. Son, yeah, how it affects you to know <laughs> that that your son doesn't love you enough to call you handy. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming on. It was uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking about it. And uh, where can everyone find you? Well, right now, just Instagram. I've been pushed hard to join the Facebook. Uh, Jeremy Spies. Look it and up in the show spell- notes because you're going to spell it wrong anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's spelled just like it sounds. And uh, See, yeah. yeah, sure it is. See, that's funny. Canadian English, I guess, in, you know, you say spelt and I would say spelled. Ah. Which I don't think it's, either one is wrong. It's just like, a, you know. A thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that more in the after show. Stay tuned. And stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. And have a great day. Bye. Bye bye.